DNA, the code of life. In this first video, we look at the location, structure and function of DNA. DNA is in a group of organic compounds known as nucleic acids. There are two types of nucleic acids, namely DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA known as ribonucleic acid. We will discuss these two across the course of this section. So some revision from the previous grades, it's important that we understand the cell structure and know a little bit about some of the organelles that we will mention. Right, so one of the important parts of the cell we should know is structure C. Structure C is the background of the cell known as the cytoplasm, right? It's made up of cytosol. We also will mention the structure over here, which we know to be the mitochondria. Right, the singular is mitochondrion and the plural is mitochondria. Okay, we also need to know about these small dots that are found within the cytoplasm. Okay, so these dots are known as ribosomes. We find some of them just lying within the cytoplasm, while others are attached onto the endoplasmic reticulum, label number I here, we're going to find certain ribosomes are attached onto the endoplasmic reticulum and we mentioned that to be the rough ER or the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Structure E is also very very important in our discussions and structure E is the nucleus. Now the structure of the nucleus on the outside we've got the nuclear membrane sometimes known as the nuclear envelope. Within the nuclear membrane, we find small gaps. So we get the nuclear membrane or envelope, and then we've got gaps in between. And these gaps are known as nuclear pores. And so pores refer to tiny openings. Within the nucleus, we find that we get the chromatin. And the chromatin network is where in we find the DNA. There's also a circular structure known as the nucleolus. And the background within the nucleus is known as the nucleoplasm. So similar to how we have a cytoplasm in, as a background of a cell, we've got the nucleoplasm as the background of the nucleus. Right, so that these structures and knowing their names would be important for the processes that we will discuss. So the location of DNA, where is DNA found? There's two places in which we find DNA within animals. The majority of DNA is found within the nucleus, known as nuclear DNA. And we also find DNA within the mitochondria, right, known as mitochondrial DNA. Now, the DNA within your nucleus is inherited from your mother and your father. You've got half of your chromosomes coming from your mother and the other half of your chromosomes coming from your father. However, the mitochondrial DNA, interestingly, only comes from your mother. And we will discuss mitochondrial DNA and how we use it to find maternal ancestry when you do the section on evolution. Right, so within the nucleus, We've got chromatin in certain stages of cell division. We've got the formation of chromosomes. These chromosomes are made up of chromatin that is tightly coiled together, twisted and connected very tightly together. And this chromatin is made up of proteins and the DNA wrapped around it. So if we go the other way around, we've got our DNA structure here. And this DNA is wrapped around certain proteins and that now is 
further coiled and twisted and condensed into a structure known as chromosomes. And we find these chromosomes within the nucleus of our cells. So if you zoom in to a chromosome, we find that a chromosome is made up of two strands known as the chromatids. These chromatids are identical copies to each other, right? So the chromatid on the left-hand side would have exactly the same identical genetic information as the one on the right-hand side, because there is the result of a process known as DNA replication, where a copy was made of the one side to form this X-shaped chromosome. Right, so these two chromatids are joined by a centromere. Right, so the position of the centromere can vary. Sometimes it's more central, sometimes it's more towards the top or to the bottom. But the centromere, it joins the two chromatids together. What's indicated in blue here is a gene. Now, a gene is a short piece of DNA that has the information for a particular trait or for a particular protein. So example, you can have a gene for your eye color. You can have the gene for producing the hormone insulin in your body. And that gene, you can see, obviously, you're going to have two copies of it on a chromosome. Now, the structure of DNA. The history of the discovery of DNA, we will mention it very briefly. So there were some scientists, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, and these two, they were studying DNA from the chemistry and physics part of it. And in their studies, they took a X-ray image through a process known as X-ray diffraction. And they had this image of DNA from their studies. There were another two scientists from the biological side, Watson and Crick, and they had used other researchers' information on this molecule known as DNA. And they were busy trying to understand how is its structure made up. And they visited Wilkins' lab and they saw this image of Franklin's, of the X-ray image of DNA. And when they looked at this image, they understood that the only way this image could be formed is if the structure of DNA is a double helix, meaning it's double-stranded and it is twisted. And that's what's known as a double helix, right? So this discovery was quite a huge discovery and a lot of the research and a lot of the information that we know in biology today is as a result of this understanding the structure of DNA that we can have a lot of progress that we've made. And a lot of it comes down to this discovery. So as a result of it being such a great discovery, they were awarded the Nobel Prize for their efforts. However, Franklin was not awarded the prize that she had passed away already by the time at which the prize was awarded. Okay, if you look at the structure of DNA, it consists of two strands that are arranged similar to a ladder, but then it's twisted, so it forms a double helix. Right? That's the name of the structure of DNA. It's a double helix. It's made up of millions of tiny subunits, which are known as nucleotides. So the same way in which many bricks put together make up a wall, the nucleotides put together make up the structure of DNA. So the structure of a nucleotide, every nucleotide has a phosphate molecule and the phosphate is joined to a deoxyribose sugar. So in DNA, we have a DNA, uh, we're gonna have a deoxyribose sugar, whereas in RNA, we'd have a ribose sugar. And that's where you can see the difference in the name of the molecule. And the, these two are joined to a nitrogenous base. Now there are four different types of nitrogenous bases within DNA. So the phosphates and the sugar, they form the backbone of the DNA molecule. And then the bases, they form the rungs. So we've got the sugar and the phosphates joined to each other, making up this blue structure, which is the, what we call the backbone. And then we've got pairs of nitrogenous bases that will join together. And those form the rungs of the ladder. And then this entire structure is twisted. And that's what forms the double helix structure of DNA. The four nitrogenous bases making up the four different types of nucleotides being adenine, 
you find there's differences in pronunciation, adenine or adenine, it doesn't make a difference really, as long as you can spell it correctly when it comes to writing it out. Right, so there's adenine, there's cytosine or cytosine, thymine, and guanine, right? So those are the four different types of nucleotides we get within DNA. There is a slight difference when it gets to RNA, but we'll mention that when we get to that section. Now we get what, we, what is known as complementary pairing. Right? Complementary pairing means that those bases that fit with each other always join with each other. So we find that always thymine and adenine join together, T and A, and guanine and cytosine join together. And this is a very important piece of information because you'll use this quite often in your studies, right? So you need to know this very well because it will apply in a lot of different questions that you will get. And when you get to protein synthesis, you're gonna see that you need to understand this also in quite a bit of detail, right? So a way to remember it is that the cute girls are all taken. Right, so if you remember that short phrase, the cute girls are all taken, you'll remember that C and G join together and A and T join together. So this is what we call a stick diagram of the structure of DNA. We find that you've got nucleotides and this would represent one nucleotide. It's got a P for a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nucleotide, it's got a specific nitrogenous base here. In this case, it's A adenine. There's another nucleotide on the other side, which also has a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar. And this one here would have to be thymine, the nitrogenous base, because we know that adenine and thymine join together. You'll find that the next nucleotide is joined to the first one where the sugar of the first one joins to the phosphate of the next one. So we'll find that each of the nucleotides, the sugar and phosphates join together to form a sugar phosphate backbone. And the nitrogenous base will join to the complementary nitrogenous base. So if you've got C cytosine, you can have G guanine joining on the other side. And the structure when we have the joining of the nitrogenous bases, we find that that joining is by what we call weak hydrogen bonds, right? So weak hydrogen bonds, they join the nitrogenous bases. And the structure is then twisted to form the double helix structure, right? So because of complementary base pairing, the order of bases on one strand will determine the order of bases on the other strand. So if on the one strand you have a C, we'll know on the other strand you're gonna to have to have a G, basically. These complementary bases are joined by weak hydrogen bonds and the two strands twist to form the double helix structure. Right, so just for repetition and for emphasis, if we've got on the one strand adenine, cytosine, thymine, cytosine, adenine, guanine, thymine, that is the sequence of nitrogenous bases. And that's the way the DNA code is stored. It's stored in the, a specific sequence of bases. We'll know that adenine will always join with, A joins with T for thymine, C for cytosine will always join with G for guanine, T with A, C with G, A with T, the G with a C and a T with A. A. So that's the complementary strand on the other side will have the nucleotides in that order. And these are joined together by weak hydrogen bonds. What are the functions of DNA? The main functions of DNA include, they play a vital role in protein synthesis, the making of proteins, right? So synthesis means to make if you remember from your previous grades, you've learned of photosynthesis, the making using photo is light. So your protein synthesis is the making of proteins, all right? So 
uh, DNA has a code within it, and it has a code for making all of the proteins. So we learn about the process of protein synthesis a bit later, and we learn how that code is extracted from DNA, and then the cells are able to make proteins, and those proteins determine our characteristics. So your eye color, the type of hair you have, the type of skin you have, all of those, the way you look, what we know, know as your phenotype is determined by the type of proteins you have. And those proteins, they are coded for within your DNA. It's also responsible for the passing on of hereditary material, right? So from parent to offspring, during reproduction, we'll find that the sperm cell and the ovum from the female will join together. And the sperm cell nucleus will have the DNA of the father and the ovum nucleus will have the DNA of the mother. And when these two fuse during fertilization, then the offspring will inherit the DNA from both parents. And in that way, it will inherit the characteristics from both parents. It also plays an important role in the process of replication, which we will learn about in the next video. And this is the process of making copies of DNA. Okay, so as we mentioned in the next video, we're gonna be looking at DNA replication. We'll also look at the process of DNA profiling, quite an interesting process in one of the future videos. And then the last video in this section would be on protein synthesis.